What up? It's your boy T Bear in reaction to Dave's Wrestling Wednesday. If you were watching right now, every year, you know, this, this we recently um, de dealt with the WWE draft, and this past Monday Night Raw was the first first uh, Monday Night Raw with the draft picks was in effect. You know what I mean? May as well, too. Some good pickups as well, too. Show, showing, off, showing off they belong. belong. But at the time, times though, WWE draft has always had some. Questionable moments or all two something that has to be not so intelligent. So this is tip from from the homies parts for no shout out to me boys. Though. I've been I've been watching a lot of their documentary video. They're pretty cool as well too. This is ten ten dumbest WWE draft moments ever. So that being said, let's check it out. Shake 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 mm -hmm. do 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 shake shake shake. Shake your roster. Mm -hmm. It's time to shake things up again. WWE's draft has just come and gone, and once again, they've loaded their roster into a box, shook it up like a child figuring out what their Christmas gift sounds like, and then dumped them out to see what brands they land on. From time to time, the WWE draft or superstar shakeup have made for pretty memorable moments. Cena and Batista taking their talents and their titles to the other show, the whole 2002 system with Flair uh -huh. and Vince making their choices as opposed to a war room of nameless television pricks and a f robot. They yeah, had their moments, that was wild. Many right of there. Them. For the most part, the WWE draft has been a pretty unimaginative, uncreative experience, making for often drab, uninspired shows, or at their worst, some really f dumb ones. Guess what we're here to discuss today? I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 10 dumbest WWE draft moments ever. But before we get on with this list, make sure, of course, that you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun list just like it. And maybe let us know in the comments below what topics you would like to see covered on a list in the near future. Number 10, Rey Mysterio drafted away from Mexican viewership. It felt like a pretty big deal when Rey Mysterio was drafted to Raw to start the 2008 WWE draft. Since his debut in 2002, he had been a SmackDown guy 100% of the time. Okay. And then they realized you can't get Raw in Mexico, and they just drafted oh, the one and only Mexican superstar away wow. from SmackDown, resulting in a massive drop in SmackDown's Mexican dang, viewership. Whoops. That, dang, I didn't know that. That's wild right there. Oh, that's wild. Mm, yeah, that, that was definitely uh, some... Um, some tone deaf shit right there, Vince. From a content standpoint, Ray being drafted to Raw wasn't that dumb of a move. It gave him some fresh. Like I mean, it was. Like I said, it was a good move, but again, that was that's somewhat tone deaf, not knowing that it, that some people don't have SmackDown. That's just true. I mean, you know, remember, you no know, Raw. You remember for for a while, SmackDown was actually on regular television, like regular television. It's kind of it is right now with Fox, but like I said, I'm not sure it's basic TV or non-cable the same I think if you, everybody should have some kind of like either cable or streaming service now but back then you had, you had cable basic cable premium cable or no cable at all if you had no cable at all the least you can watch was Smackdown and yeah so I understand that wow scenery for the first time in his WWE career but it well, certainly they tried wasn't to put it anything USA that made up for that, that loss Ray feuded with Kane and then Mike Knox to close out 2008, no. two feuds that didn't bring any eyeballs to the show, right. and then won the Intercontinental title from JBL in a 21-second match with no build at WrestleMania 25 before WWE course-corrected and drafted him back to SmackDown with maximum efficiency. Yep. Thankfully, by the time he was drafted to Raw again in 2011, you could get both shows in Mexico, so that move was no problemo. Number 9, Drafting Gable Steveson. Yeah, about that. Yeah, we he still have we when 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 we want to get this when he made appearances. His brother, his brother now know as Damon Kemp doing more than he doing right now. What's going on with that? Like, I, I yeah yeah yeah. We 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 want to, we have to put down the dumb right now because which what are we doing with him right now? Like, come on, don't you? What we there's doing wasted well. draft picks, right. and then there's wasted draft picks. Right. Like a trade for the ability to draft Brian Bosworth level of wasted draft pick. For WWE, that came in 2021 in the form of Gable Stevenson, the Olympic gold medalist and WWE hopeful mm. who a year and a half later has yet to make his in-ring right. debut. A draft pick done for the sole purpose of getting two, us And two, we, like said, we just had another draft pick, and what's going on? Is he still, is he still on Raw? What's going on with that? All to say, oh yeah, he exists. 
There were probably a bunch of folk who were hoping Stevenson would pick up the squared circle thing with the speed of fellow Olympic gold medalist right. Kurt Angle, but that is an impossible Whoa. thing to Hopefully wish upon anyone. Hopefully that being said, heel. I would Hopefully love to know face, the thought course. process behind drafting Gable Stevenson to Raw in 2021, a full six months before he would even be allowed to hit one suplex on the right. other Gable at WrestleMania 38. It is now 2023, and we have not seen hide nor Olympic gold of Stevenson since. This isn't to say Gable won't pan out in WWE, but I think it's pretty safe to say that as far as being a 2021 draft pick, he's about as big a bust as you can get. Damn. Mark my words, he probably debuts on SmackDown too. Number eight, drafting shit. hit row. Okay. Oh my God, I hate to admit this, but the hit row's not, not a hit anymore. It's like after the swerve, it wasn't a hit no more, man. It, 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 they, they, they just... This, this, I'm. There's, no, there's nothing to do with him. I mean, they was, they, they was not enough when I was swerving. I was hopping for, I was all for him for a minute because they was healed. They was faces for a minute. Uh, they was faces for a minute at, and from XT to SmackDown. But then they, they brought back. They was faces again, but back to Hill. But at this point, all K fam on my side. They're not. They're not doing it. They're not it no more, man. I'm sorry. They're not. They're not it no more. This one still feels personal. I take you all back to the time that was summer of 2021. Pete and I had just formed LIW, we were starting to go outside again, and we had fallen in love with Hit Row. Right. The group that was the most entertaining thing to hit NXT in the year 2021, which was far from the peak of NXT interest, but still had some bangers nonetheless. Hit Row had swagger, a unique presentation, and by it, it, all it, it accounts, sky-high point. potential. Isaiah Swerve Scott was proving himself to be a potential main event star and waiting. The others were learning, and then they got drafted to SmackDown. Mm. This is a nightmare! I see, I agree. That was, they got drafted to SmackDown too soon. They, they, they should have did more in NXT, but I understand. Yeah, this was like the worst time ever for WWE. They were always touting their desire to look for new top stars and then would call up some folk from NXT and fire them with the quickness. Yeah. Hit Row got drafted on October 1st. 34 days later, BFAB was released, and then 15 days after that, the rest of them got the boot too. What was the f point? Right. Congrats on giving another top guy to AEW, f wits. But like I said, this was personal. Number seven, splitting up teams. Yeah. Did Vince McMahon ever have I will a say that, y'all. I know some sometime it's a blessing in the sky, but sometimes this is why. You know what I'm saying? Like and growing up, did they break his heart, steal his favorite baseball card, anything? Because there must be some reason for Vinny Mac's love of splitting up all these tag teams. Sure, there have been some teams that may have been due for a split. Miz and Morrison in 2009 were both earmarked for singles pushes, and hey, if both guys are going to benefit from going. I get that. This one was on, this was understandable. Look me in the eye and tell me that anyone thought drafting Sanity and Nikki Cross to different shows was going to help right. anyone, or for that matter, splitting up teams like the Dudley Boys in 2002 and the New Day in 2020. Yeah, the New Day. Sure, the New Day have all stayed relevant after Biggie was taken from them, with the biggest of ease, even reigning as WWE mm -hmm. champion on Raw, but splitting up the New Day made them sad, and how dare you make these lovely lads sad. The Dudleys, however, just didn't work apart. Yeah. Bubba found the nearest available Dudley to continue the whole tag thing, while Devon found religion, and then they found themselves back together in short order. And uh, Davey Ray, uh, a well-known deacon by the name of Batista. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream function, after all. Number six, the entire 2007 draft. Request there have been a fair few WWE superstar draft ups that have been largely inconsequential, but then there's the 2007 draft, which was entirely inconsequential. Now, granted, not a lot of this could be considered WWE's fault unless one of the members of management came out as clairvoyant, but just look at these picks. King Booker oh, to Raw, yeah. gone from WWE two months later. Bobby Lashley to Raw, injured one month later and then gone from WWE. Oh, the Boogeyman yeah. to ECW, injured three months later and gone for a year. Damn. Corey Wilson to SmackDown, gone from WWE five months later. <laughs> Chris Masters is Yo, what? I, I, I do remember that. Yeah, they, they it's like the draft didn't make sense. I think that's when they say fuck. They, so that's what they, I think that's when they stopped doing drafts. I think it's easier that when they started the Super Show was when we made, made that later. Anyway, I think that's when they stopped doing the draft. because Gone from WWE four months later. Ric Flair to SmackDown. Still did most of his big angles on Raw and then retired less than a year later. Right. Mr. Kennedy to Raw. Injured and suspended for much of the time and then moved back to SmackDown the following year. Lord. Snitsky to Raw. Basically a jobber after a failed push centered around bad teeth. <laughs> Rip Baker would be disgusted. <laughs> then all that's left is Chris Benoit to ECW. Mm, 
You already know. You already know about that. You and enough said there. And the great Kali to SmackDown, who did win the vacant World Heavyweight Title just weeks later. But the less remembered about that, the better. Time to shake things up. God, stop! You shook it too much. Number five, the Viking Experience. <laughs> Yes. Oh, they all oh, folks was mad about. Yeah, they lost their mind with that name. They could well, wasn't fixed. Should have been broke or wasn't broken. Shouldn't be fixed. Fixed as well. No, oh, they could have left them at the war raider, but they did this and then they went to Viking Raiders. I mean, Viking Raiders was a was a consolation, but they could have left them at the war raiders. But I guess they like I said they didn't want to they didn't want to promote uh war and violence. I guess, but. They could, but they should have started with the Viking Raiders if anything. But they lost their mind. This is when, this is when they really had to, folks had really had the jokes about them about the renaming. We get called up. So much nonsense has happened over the last four years. We were legit getting weeks where Brock squashed Kofi and then Seth killed the Fiend with some kind of hammer mm. two days apart. So you best believe there was plenty to complain about. So much, in fact, that you might forget about some of these equally ridiculous things. Calling up the War Raiders from NXT while they were still the NXT mm -hmm. Tag Team Champions isn't immediately a bad idea. They're great wrestlers, seemingly fit for the right. main roster. Just but make sure you have a good reason to pull them out of NXT ahead of schedule and you're good. No. That's... No. You can't do that. All they had was renaming them to sound like a sh 4D ride at Universal Studios. Like a rubbish summer camp team building course. Like a group of drama school students teaching you about Norse mythology via rap. Thankfully, the name didn't stick, but Hansen still became Ivar, and mm -hmm. Ray Rose still became Eric. It's been four years, and they're still... Yeah, I could, yeah they could have kept me Hansen or Rose, man. I like the, the name better, but whatever. Still a member of the WWE roster whose entire ring name is just Eric. Number four, drafting the wrong belts. You would think that color coordinating your belts to match your shows like a children's cartoon would make problems like this avoidable. On more than one occasion, WWE has drafted the red champ to the blue show and the blue champ to the red show. First in 2020 when the Raw tag champs, the Street Profits put on blue pennies and the SmackDown tag champs, the New Day put on red pennies. How would they solve this problem? Change the name of the belts to be non-brand specific? Nah, they just met up at the old swap meet and exchanged belts. It was the bitch they gonna do. They did. They, they did, had to do with Charlotte and uh, Becky, but they originally wanted to do with Rhea and uh, Bianca soon. Edge, and then they did yep. the exact same thing the following year with the women's belts, with Raw champ Charlotte and SmackDown champ Becky Lynch also trading their cummer buns like the props that they were in a very tense moment. Watch our list of the 10 most unprofessional wrestling moments ever caught on camera to see but, just um, how tense. Yep. But while trading belts has they been a do again. for WWE, trading belts away from their home isn't, as ECW champions Bobby Lashley and Kane were both drafted to Raw in 2007 mm. and 2008. Blaster Lindsay was stripped of his belt, but Kane? Mm. Kane was just the ECW champion on Raw for a week. It's almost like naming your belt after specific shows is a bad idea. Wow. Number three, Vince McMahon is crushed. Speaking of former ECW champions, Vince McMahon was a steady presence during the 2008 WWE draft. Was he announcing picks or involved in a major storyline? Nah, he was burning money. Oh, God. Not. This was the culmination of McMahon's million dollar oh, mania. God, that damn little Mc that, that, that nonsense right slightly there. Slightly more ridiculous than WrestleMania. Join the New World Ollie today, where Vince would give away a million dollars of his own money each week on Raw. At the draft, just after giving away a half a million dollars, the entire WWE set imploded with the all ID right. baller crushing Vince dead. Right. Well, oh, yeah. Quite dead. Oh, dead. I do kind of remember that. Oh, my God. I kind of remember that. Wow. What the hell did it stick with Enough that? for Vince to devolve into melodrama, crying, I can't feel my legs, as he was stretchered out as the show went off the air. It was rather sweet to see guys like Edge, Triple H, and John Cena all put their differences aside to tend to their crushed boss, but it doesn't quite make up for this incredibly unserious situation being made to look like the most ultra-serious angle in WWE's history. Number two, Jim Ross, please stand up. Why uh -oh. do WWE hate Jim Ross? Is it because he's Southern? Is it because he worked for WCW? Is it because Vince McMahon just needs a punching bag? No matter which way you slice it, Vince mm. sure comes across as a very well-adjusted human being for sure as was on display at the 2008 WWE Draft. 
Boy, this was a dumb show, wasn't it? Mick Foley had spent the prior few weeks saying he'd hoped that he would be doing commentary with good old JR after the draft, and when they teed up a segment by saying this was an announcer's only draft pick match, the writing may as well have been on the wall and spelled in barbecue sauce. Sure enough, Jim Ross was drafted to SmackDown and Michael Cole was drafted to Raw, and the real dumb bit is they never told Jim Ross about it. He had to find out his entire life was going to be turned upside down, and his acclaimed partnership with Jerry Lawler had come to an end, all with a wow. camera pointing right in his face. It's so awkward and uncomfortable as wow. JR just stands up, confused, and moves to his new desk, and yeah, he's visibly pissed off, and it turns out so is everyone else on the announced team because they're not whack jobs who take pleasure in the discomfort of their f colleagues. And number one, John Cena kills the draft. God, this made me mad when I was but a 14-year-old John Cena-hating wrestling fan. And really, John still kind of makes me mad now. What was the reason for this? What was the reason? What was the reason? Oh, what? What are why did I really throw up this when he said that <laughs> and he played it? <laughs> SmackDown was in need of a refresh in 2011 with the retirement of Edge clearing mm. way for a top guy and for John Cena to be moved first on the night, that was pretty much as big a move as you could get. Cool, I'm on board so far. And then the rest of the show goes off with Rey Orton also moving to SmackDown, Rey Mysterio and Alberto Del Rio moving to Raw, and then the final draft pick of the night flashes up on screen for Raw and who could it be? Maybe Christian, Cody Rhodes perhaps? Nope. John, John yep. Cena. I remember. Not only I thought it was. I remember somebody got drafted to uh, the back to back on the same night. I think Triple H did too. If I can, if I'm, if I, if I correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know. It was him. I forgot somebody else got was like that too. Like I drafted one, got drafted one show, and then got drafted back to another. Did it make the final draft pick of the night meaningless? Not only did it make the first draft pick of the night meaningless, but it meant that we were right back where we. F started with John Cena running the main event scene of Raw as he had been for the prior six years. No wonder they didn't do another draft for five years. I don't know that I would have been that offended if they had just drafted him in the first place, but this was their big f play. This was their big idea for the night. And what was the point? I must reiterate, what was the reason? And that's our list. Please make right, sure. cool. There you have it though, yeah. Definitely remember that though. I think Triple H got set, dragged, did back and forth, back and forth before too though. I don't know if it was, uh was like the first draft or something like that. I couldn't remember. Either way, yeah, that was wild right there though. I I didn't you know at the time being a Cena fan, I didn't care for it though. It is what it is though. Though I wasn't John Cena here like this guy was, but either way, yeah, that was wild right there. So other than that, um, sure that you subscribe to Parts Unknown. Anyway, sure. If you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T-Bird signing off. One love.